Hey everyone, part four of the engine build series. This time it's all about modifying the engine. So I'll be heading across to BCR performance shortly, but just before I do, I thought I'd show you some more progress I've been making with the bike. Here's what I'm up to so far. So as you can see, I've got the bearings all back in, the yokes back on. So I've got a plate at the back and the battery box mounted. Also started marking up where I'm gonna have the hanger bracket. This one will be a left-hand side exhaust on this one. So that's the swing arm built back up. Put the shark fin on paddock stand bobbins and also those aim chain adjusters at the back as well. Another trick part I got for the bike is this thumb brake. So this was made for me by HWW Racing. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can buy these. So what's really cool about this is he's managed to get it working with the standard rear master cylinders. And it's just a case of undoing these two bolts, bolting it to the thumb brake. And then you do have to change this part in here to make it work, but it's fairly easy to do. It's obviously easy if you do it whilst rebuilding the master cylinder at the same time. So hopefully with this being a hand operated brake, I might be able to get a bit more feel through it and it might improve my riding style. Another thing I got for the bike is this kit for the suspension. So I suppose this is a bit like a halfway between the standard and the cartridge kit. So this lot replaces the existing setup inside the forks. So it's got preload adjusters on the top, which you can see there. And obviously you can screw these down and give the bike a bit of preload. And it's got these spacers and then these two springs instead of the existing springs, which are these. You'll have a top and a bottom spring. These spaces go in between, they go inside the fork, preload caps at the top. And this is set up to be more of a track set up for the bikes. So it's a bit of experimentation and we'll see how I get on with it. Hello guys, welcome back to BCR Performance. In this video, we're gonna do all the exciting things. I'm gonna show you how to modify the engine or how I modify the engine. In the last video, we done the strip down, the assessment. Since then, we've, we've vape blast the engine, we've honed the bores, ordered all the parts from Padgett motorcycles. That's who I use for all of the Honda parts. Now we're on to skimming the deck. So I'm going to show you how to skim the top of a block. Because the CB500s are, the top crankies on the CB500s are not like a split barrel, we have to put them on an angle plate, which is this. So you bolt the angle plate to the bed, and then you bolt the block to the angle plate. Um, I eyeball it, you know, get it there, thereabouts with a, with a digital angle gauge. Once I've done that, then you put the DTI on, get it as close as you can, and then you fine tune it to with, within 0 0.01 of a millimetre. And then what that basically means is as the machine is going across, the cut is perfectly on line and level with the top of the block. So obviously you don't want to skim it on an angle this way, that way. You want it to be perfectly flat. So what you would do is you'd put it in and you just give it a light sweep across. And as, the, as that moves across, you would look on the, on the gauge to see if it's out anywhere. We've got this already dialed in perfectly for the sake of the video, just to show you um, what it is. So now we're going to do the first cut. So first I'm going to apply some engineer's blue to the surface of the deck. I'll just dab it on. And what this does, this allows you to see where your cut is. It also looks good for yeah, the purpose so of the video. I'll be able to see it. Yeah. Trimming that it look, it's satisfying to be yeah. honest. But this basically highlights any low points. So anywhere when we do our first cut, if we've missed anywhere, then it will be... Um, we know where to go. Yeah, back. we'll know where to go back over it. For the sake of the video, we're going to show you a 0.2 millimeter cut. That's not what we're taking off the engine. We've applied the engineer's blue. Now we need to bring the machine in. So what basically what we're cutting with, basically a flight cutter with an aluminium insert in here. Get it there, there about. And this is just a fine adjuster. Right, I'm all done, um, all set up. So the touching off basically is just where the tip, the very tip of the cutter first meets the cylinder head. Uh, once we've done that, we zero out the digital readout. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah, so that's on zero. And that gives us, that allows then to cut what we want off. So the first cut we're going to do is a 0.2 mil cut. So just explain why we're doing this in the first place then, Ben. So the reason why we're doing this is basically to do booster compression. Um, by cutting the top of this, top of the block, we are reducing the gap between the top of the piston and the bottom of the head. That's called your squish clearance. Yeah. So if you have a tighter squish clearance, you're giving yourself more compression. Okay, right, so that's at the start, as you can see. I want to do a 0.2 millimeter cut. So it's zeroed off. Um, let me go down, turn up the oh. Yeah, let's dial this in to 0.2, there we go. Okay, so it's spinning. So for the first cut, which is 0.2, there we go, I'm cutting away.
Yeah, so this is only a roughing cut, really. On the final cut, we'll only do a very small, like, 0 0.05 mil cut. Yeah, just to give it a go. And we'll up the speed of the cutter as well um, with some WD-40, and that'll give a much better finish. Right, so we've done all of the other cuts, and now we're on to the final cut. This is like a very light 0.1 of a mil cut, and it's with a bit of a, a new sharp insert to give that really smooth, flat finish. Okay, so that's the final cut all done. Now, last thing to do before I take it off the angle plate is just to give it a debear. Obviously, we've got all these sharp edges here that we don't want. So just a simple debearing tool. That one. Do I do all these too? I mean, all the threads and everything, we'll chase all these on the, uh, before we actually blast that. Yeah, give it a good clean. There she is. That's one machined deck of a CB500. Right, so we've done the cylinder, we've skimmed the deck. That's all good to go. Next is all of the cylinder head work. We're gonna take you through the process of porting the cylinder head. Basically, I use a Fordham die grinder on a flexi shaft with a range of six mil cutting bits. It's a process really. So the first stage is the first cut, which is with an aggressive bear. Once you've done that and got your main shape, you then move on to a sand roll, which is like that. Uh, you've got different shapes and different sizes of sand rolls, there's a range of there. And then once you've done that, we would go on to a slotted mandrel, which is what that is. And then we've got a range of slot, yeah, and it just fit, it just basically fits in. So the first bit really, the first focus is to take down the valve guide. That's what I'm going to do here now. So I want to take down the guides, not too much, just want to take them down to get the, the rough shape. Yeah. And then I'll do that on all four. Once I've done that, I'll then move in to taking out the aluminium and shaping aluminium where I want it to be. It's quite a lengthy process, isn't it really? Just refining and refining. It takes a long time to do, yeah, because obviously, I mean, once I've done the exhausts, the step then is to obviously do the intakes. So the intakes get epoxied. The reason why the epoxy them, I epoxy them is to theoretically add material. You want the fuel to travel in as straight as it possibly can. You can easily knacker ahead by taking too much out. Yeah. The main aim of porting is to get the air and fuel in as fast as you can and out as fast as you can. Yeah. The faster you can do that, the more power the engine will produce. As well with the cylinder head is you can change a lot of, you can modify a cylinder head to give you more bottom end and you can modify a cylinder head to give you more top end. At low RPM, you would want more velocity. So you want that, you would you would narrow the port in a way if you're looking for that. At a high RPM, you would have them a little bit bigger because obviously the engine's revving so it's pulling more in. So what will we be doing with this one then? A lot of people get, get tied up on the whole horsepower figure. Yeah. Horsepower... Big numbers. <laughs> big numbers, yeah. Horsepower sells engines, torque, wins races. Right, well I need help winning races, so let's get some torque. We want some torque, yeah. So that, that's why I had, on, on the intakes, I had epoxy resin. Um, and that's to basically straight line the fuel. Yeah. Straight line the port, because on, on these, where the, the bowls are, they've got quite a... S yeah, a scoop to them, yeah. Yes, so we want to narrow that down. Looking in there, I mean, it's really hard to pick up on the camera, but they're really rough, aren't they? Yeah, as, as they come yeah. from factory. Well, that's so how they are. Really see how this is going to make a massive difference. Yeah, big time. That's just a little bit of cutting. I don't know if you can see it on the video, so I've took a little bit of the guide down. Okay, so I've done, I've cut down the guides a small amount. Um, now I'm going to move on to a bit more of a uni foot, like a, an olive type of tool, so I can blend it in and take the hump that's behind the valve guide down. Let's see if I can show it on the camera. It's quite difficult to see in there. Yeah, so it's just like a rough cut, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it, I mean, when you look at that compared to what it'll look like at the end, yeah. it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. The different bears that I've got, I've got, as you can see, I've got a lot of different shapes. You know, I've got a lot of different type of cuts, so as you can see. Uh, so you've got a double cut, a single cut. So now I've just got a little, a small one. 
which I'm just going to do. I'm just going to do a little bit more shaping on behind the valve guide, pull it in. And then as I, once I've done that, I'll then do towards the, the throat of the, uh, the valve. So the next step is now to do the throat, which is like the upper part, just to blend this in. Um, one of the things you have to be really careful with here, well, in general of doing it, is obviously not to take out any of the valve seats. Even though we are going to recut them, it's just a lot of inconvenience if you take it, you know, if you hog it out. Yeah. Once we've done this part here, we'll flip it over, and then I'll do it from the back. Right, we've finished the port from the other side. Now we're onto the back side here now, so I can get a bit more access. I'm going to finish off shaping some of the guides and then move on to the aluminium. So what you're doing now then is effectively that bolt-on kit that you sell online, isn't it? Yeah, basically that. The bolt-on kit on the website is a fully gas load head, high lift cams, lightweight flywheel. The head that I'm doing on here is exactly what you would get if you bought the bolt-on package. The good thing about the bolt-on package is obviously if you don't want to have a full engine rebuild done, that's fine. You can either send the head to me or I can provide the head. Basically, we'll do all of this, everything you're going to see today on the video. So all the ports and all the seats cut, everything else, new stem seals and new cams fitted and it'll be fully shimmed. So basically, all you have to do is take your old head off, fit the new one, job done. Nice and easy. Instant power increase. Instant power increase, yeah. You do, you will may possibly need to put it on the dyno just to get your air and fuel yes, that's adjusted. Yes. Um, but other, other than that, yeah, that's what, that's what it is. We've got the exhaust ports finished now. I ended up finishing on uh, 400 grit. Uh, it was originally the 150, then went on to 240, then on to the 400 to finish it off. Come up really good, so looking forward to doing the um, the other side and cutting the seats. Right, so now I'm going to show you how to cut the valve seats. So what we've got here is a ball head type of valve seat cutter. Got a carbide pilot, the ball head. When you're cutting seats, the, well, the way I do it, it's with basically a form tool. So this is a B4 insert, and on this B4 insert here, you have three angles. Bottom angle, middle angle, and the top angle. That's how you get a three angle cut. The diameter of the 45 degree seat is one millimeter on this. I'll use this on the intakes and the exhaust. So what we need to do is I need to set the tool so that the 45 face cuts exactly in the correct place where the valve matches the seat. Yeah. So what you do is lower it in and then basically bring it so the point is at the very, very edge of the valve itself. Yep. You set that? Yep. Right, so that's set. Get your carbide pilot, nip it up. This part is exactly the same diameter of the valve stem. This is specifically for CB500s. Oh, right, yeah. Normally they're a lot longer than this, but because I, the way the, C, the CBs are, I've shortened it down. You put it in and then basically where the 45 is you want to get it right on the edge so you know when you cut that seat the 45 degree cut is going to be exactly in the correct place for the valve face yeah. to sit right on the 45 degree seat so i'll cut this seat first so pop it in get my bone spring custom bush now we're ready to cut so we've brought it down to the touch of the seat and now ready to cut, in, cut the profile into the seat. We've already centered the pilot, so the pilot has to be perfectly in line with the center of the spindle. We've already done that before, and it takes a little bit of time, but once it's in place, it's good. The way I do it, I just bring it down. And you'll hear it start to cut, there we go. May go lock that off so it centers, let it cut a second. You give it a second to cut, that now is making sure that the seat is perfectly true to a 45 degree. Okay. And then back it off. Turn it off. 
Oh yeah, you can really tell the difference in that. Again, don't know how much the camera's picking it up, but you can really, really see a nice clean cut in there. All right, I'll just fly through these now. All right, so what we're gonna do now after uh, doing the valve seats, we're gonna skim the head. So got the fly cutter spinning here. First thing I need to do is just cut, touch off. Once it starts touching it, I know we're at zero. There you go. So you can see the line if you have a look in there. Yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. So I set that to zero in there, because I know that's zero, the cutter. What we'll do is do the first cutter point two, and the final one as a finishing cut at yeah. point one. It does look smooth, doesn't it? Yeah, big difference, yeah. It's the PCD insert, that, so it's polycrystalline diamond. So as you can see, we've made a lot of progress so far. So in the next video, Ben will take us through the entire process of how he rebuilds the engine. So make sure you subscribe to follow along with the rest of the build series. So see you next time. Thanks for watching.